I don't know how much you're paying attention to this crazy shooting in Texas that happened in Cleveland, Texas. Uh, this guy, you know, apparently this is a Mexican national. This is a guy who came it came here. He shot these, this Honduran family. I mean, it, this is a crazy story. This guy, poof, he's into the wind. Do you think they'll ever find this guy? Oh, absolutely. One thing about Texas is it's known for the United States of Texas, <laughs> and it is still uh, number one law and order. Uh, you know, I'm absolutely positive they'll catch him. It's just a matter of time. That's a wooded area. So, you know, I'm sure he's a, a, in the woods somewhere hiding. You, you think so? I mean, you think he's still in that area? I mean, I, my assumption, I know if it were if it were me in, in his shoes, this guy's been deported five times. He keeps coming back. Obviously, he knows the route to and from Mexico. I would think he'd be back in Mexico. What do you, what do you think the chances of that are? Well, he's got cartel tattoos. Mm -hmm. And I've also heard rumors that he was an informant in the United States against some of the cartel. Mm. So that is a no for Mexico. Once they get him back there, I guess he's been four or five times, you know, taken back. I think he comes right back as a fear of the cartel. Mm. So and, uh, I, you know, when you kill, uh, you know, I don't know if there's a, if a right wording, there's honor among thieves, but yeah. when you kill a child in any kind of, and you belong to any kind of criminal organization, uh, that's a no-no. Mm. So even the cartel, if he goes down there, they know there's a huge reward. I think it's up to a hundred grand now. Uh, they're going to catch this guy and either turn him in or kill him and leave him where somebody can find him. So he doesn't have a a very bright future. If you'll remember six months or maybe so ago a fugitive out of Texas with almost exactly the same case broke out of a Bluebird bus, mm. a Texas Department of Corrections bus, and he was also uh, had tats almost identical to this guy, Cartel, again. And he also uh, snitched or informed on the cartel, and he, was, he couldn't go back to Mexico. And, you know, they hunted a couple of days and waited for him to steal a car. And then they have, of course, every state has license plate recognition. And as soon as he stole the car, license plate recognition is on taxi cabs, on gas stations, on, on uh, stoplights, stop signs. What it is is a little camera. And as you drive by, it takes a picture of your plate and puts it in a data database, and then you can run that plate in the database and see where the last time that car was. Yeah. So the previous fugitive, again in Texas, was hiding, hiding, and once he stole the car, the license plate recognition got him, and of course he shot it out. So they have checked. I'm in contact with some of the law enforcement down there. They have checked. Uh, probably a hundred mile radius of any cars that have been stolen. There's none that they could connect to him at least. Yeah. And uh, he does have a wife there. So let's say he did uh, get a ride somewhere. He would have had to call from his cell or her cell phone for the ride uh, or anybody else in that house. I know the cops, when he bolted, when he ran, he left his gun and his cell phone. So I'm sure the cops have went through the cell phone of his and his wife to see if he made any phone calls. But, uh, you know, I have some good uh, friends down in there, some bounty hunters in Conroe. And I talked to them this morning, and they also think because of the woods yeah. that he could stay eight to ten days in those woods, yeah. let it die down a little bit make contact with a family member or a friend and, you know, rear his evil head back up. Yeah. Well, there it is. Dwayne Chapman, Dog the Bounty Hunter. You're rarely wrong, brother. So we'll wait and see how this thing, uh, how this thing turns out, man. Thank you so much for the time and stay safe out there, buddy.